Well, it's that time of year again, and you know you need to send a great year-end letter, but don't know where to start. Well, I've got a step-by-step -step plan to get you moving. Keep watching. Feedback from many of you is that the toughest part about a year-end strategy is just getting started. And that often begins with writing. There are a handful of steps to take to craft a great letter and I'm going to share those with you today. Step 1. Who will be getting the letter? Knowing your audience is essential to any great fundraising letter, whether year-end or not. Successful writers will tell you that they create better letters when they are writing to one particular person. It often opens up a floodgate of thoughts and ideas. Pick one particular person to represent your donor base. One person that you might not know well so that you don't take understanding of your cause for granted, but knowing them well enough that you don't have to feel overly formal or too cold in writing. A well-written letter is warm and friendly. It's written as if it were coming from a friend who sat down and wrote from the heart. A colleague of mine used to say that he would envision his Uncle Charlie sitting down at his Underwood typewriter and writing a letter to a friend. Now for some of you, a typewriter is as foreign to you as the original printing press was to me. But if you're older, you immediately pictured in your head an Underwood typewriter and recall it what it was like to hunt and peck as you put to paper ideas that came streaming in your head. Step 2. Determine the basis of your appeal. People will be motivated to give to something that is forward thinking and will make a real difference. It's been said that every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. You need to find that exciting opportunity to include in your letter. What is it that will motivate someone to continue reading your letter and especially read until the end where the opportunity for partnership will be outlined? Look for a program, project, or strategy that's meaningful not only to those you serve, your audience, but that the donor or partner will find compelling. You don't need to come up with a concept that's revolutionary, although that would be nice, but find something that's genuinely making a difference in the life of one or more individuals. People respond positively to change lives an example of a changed life. I'll mention how to address that example in just a minute. Your program, project, or strategy should be easy to communicate and understand. Know this, complexity will kill your appeal. Step number three, a hook and compelling story. Earlier this year, I created a video entitled Revealing the Mysteries Behind a Fund Appeal Letter. If you haven't watched it, click the link above and watch as soon as this video is done. In that video, I reveal that every good letter has a hook and a compelling story. Studies have proven that our letters have about three to five seconds to capture the attention of the reader. And if that doesn't happen, the letter is thrown away. People tend to look first at the opening sentence or pull quote and the PS. That's why both need to tell the story. If the reader can't get the gist of your letter from those two sections, they'll never finish reading your letter. A personal story of a changed life is essential to any good appeal letter. As part of the story, it's vital and actual quotes are received from the person whose life was changed so, so that it adds to the realism and accuracy of the story. It also draws in the reader because they feel like they know the person. The hook typically includes a pull quote using the most dramatic phrase from a story. I was down to my last dime and had nowhere to turn. Then I came around the corner and there was XYZ rescue mission. I knew that was my last hope. The pull quote should be compelling enough to draw the person into reading. The story should be compelling enough to keep the reader engaged. The story should include three elements. What was life like before connecting to the organization or individual? How did the life change? And how is life different after the change? These elements are the true secret to compelling appeal. That can be done in one page, two pages, or more. Short letters generally get more responses. Longer letters generally get larger gifts. There's not a, not a right or wrong length. 
I tend to gravitate towards two-page letters, front and back, because it's the perfect balance. It's very difficult to truly unpack a story and share an opportunity in just one page, although some organizations swear by it. I have trouble telling a compelling tale given half or three quarters of a page. I need at least a full page to tell the story of a person and pull them in, leaving the rest of the space to unpack the opportunity. Step four, the opportunity in the close. As I said earlier, communicating the opportunity to give in a clear and concise manner is critical. This is done in two steps. First, the program project or strategy is introduced and explained in a manner that the reader can grasp the concept in seconds and truly get it, get what you're trying to accomplish. If the story previously explained can be an example of the success that can be achieved by the program or project, that's always best. If the strategy is new, tie the concept back to the change life story. And Gretchen is just one example of the countless lives that were changed, can be changed as a result of this program. Then explain the cost to start or keep the program going. And of course, explain the role the reader will play in the success or failure of the program. Their gift will help achieve success or their lack of involvement will quite possibly lead to failure of or failure to launch this endeavor. Then explain very clearly what you want them to do. This is referred to as the call to action. Do you want them to give? If so, how much? Do you want them to complete a survey? Do you want them to volunteer? Complete a commitment card? Don't assume anything. Explain to them like you're explaining to a small child. I realize this may sound condescending, especially if your donors are highly educated, but every study that I've ever seen in my own personal experience is that the reader needs steps explained carefully in detail. Take your check made payable to XYZ organization and include it in with the completed response card in the pre-addressed, pre-stamped, if that's what you did, envelope and mail it back to us by December 31st. Yes, you need to be that specific. I guarantee it will make a difference. You need to give people an exact amount or at least a range of what you want them to give. You can get that from a prior gift. If people often give a gift of $500, that can either be the amount you ask for or can be the first or middle range you suggest if you use a range. Your gift of $500 today will make a difference in the life of a woman like Gretchen or your gift of $250, $500 or even $1,000 will make a difference in the life of a woman like Gretchen or your gift of $500, $1,000 or even $1,500 will make a difference in the life of a woman like Gretchen. The PS may actually be the second most, if not the most, important element of a letter. It's the first or second thing read and will determine how much further people go in the reading. The PS in an appeal letter is not like a normal PS. A normal PS is generally considered afterthought and mentions something that is not mentioned in the original body of the letter. With a PS in an appeal letter, it is anything but an afterthought. It is planned out from the beginning and is seen as a summarization of the theme and heart of the letter. It mentions the change life, the opportunity, and even the need to hit the December 31st deadline. The PS can't be too long, but long enough that if that's the only thing they read in the entire letter, and it often is, the reader understands what's being communicated, what's being asked of them, and how to respond to the call to action. That's a tall order for a few sentences, but oh, so important. The more clear the letter is, the more specific the call to action is, the better results the letter will be. Finding the right balance of all these steps is never easy, but including all of them is so critical. No one gets their appeal right the first time they do it, even using this formula. But testing and testing will lead to the right balance, and in most cases, your appeal gets better every time you try. Adding a follow-up phone call will make up for many, if not all, the inadequacies in the letter. A call will fill in the gaps that have been left open. In the coming weeks, I've got a video coming out addressing what to say on a year-end call. Keep watching these videos and by all means, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video releases. Otherwise, you'll miss out on some helpful and valuable information. And don't forget to hit the like button below and add a comment if there's a creative option you've especially liked or have something I can share with others later. Remember, if you have fundraising questions, you can always reach out to me 
on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.